afternoon, everyone. I uh, just uh, Tom asked me to have an opening remark about the facility, and I, I think that the neat thing for me is that there's a, it's twofold in the fact that the arena. I think the the uh, changes in the arena have they had added some angles and some character to the building, and it just makes it feel more well-rounded all the way out there. And um, and then off the floor with what it does every every corner you go around you seem to run into a new a new area that's done and it's it's stylish it's functional i think it's going to be a big improvement for not only just our, our players and teams but um the fans and everybody around so it's just really exciting time with the Centa center Brian, how do you think it will affect recruiting well in the middle of all the re the, the uh um, the work that was going on that we had six official visits it was a long fall we did pretty well with them. we we have four of the young, four of the six young ladies committed so um, everybody seemed to be pretty impressed with what, what was going on was there anything in particular that they liked or they spoke about of the new fixtures I, I um, from what I gather everybody since I've been here has always been impressed with what the the arena looked like and it's now the bells and whistles that we have behind the scenes that we didn't have that I think some of our competitors had. And I, I think that's that's really been the, the biggest change. And, and the other thing is when they like, the parents like that when pretty much their student athlete can get all their services in, almost in one building besides living here and going to school. Other than that, I, they like that um, consistency as well. Brian, what players do you feel made the most improvement in the offseason? Uh, the two seniors, for sure, Jada Bird and Anina Ayanen, um, really, and I don't know what it is sometimes with players where um, sometimes it's other players graduating or, and not being there that some players really kind of sense an opportunity. Their personalities can blossom a little bit more. Um, but those two in particular have had really good spring and summers. Brian, um, is there any part of the experience from last season that you would use as, you know, just apply to 2017, 18. No, um, no, we, uh, it's different. I, we got away from some, some stuff that I like to do defensively. I kind of outfoxed myself last year, and our, and our defense was not nearly as aggressive or effective. So we've kind of gone back to where we were a couple years ago with some concepts there. So that, that is, that's what we're really looking for, is getting back to being a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more disruptive. And, uh, and, and it's, it's picking, picking up pretty good. The, the players are gathering, uh, figuring it out pretty quickly. Is it easier to do that when you've got nine freshmen and sophomores and they're starting from scratch? I don't know if anything's easy when you have nine freshmen and sophomores, but what I will say is the, they're very coachable, and, and, and um, they're asking questions, and they're trying to figure it out. And sometimes when you, when you talk, sometimes it's in one ear and out the other when you're talking to some people. This, this group seems to really be buying into what we're doing and then trying to execute that plan. That's, it's very refreshing. Coach, can you talk a little bit about this year's freshman class and Jordan Austin? She was the Gatorade Player of the Year in West Virginia, and right. the rest of them, this is a pretty good recruiting class for you and right. what they're going to mean to the program. Well, it's, uh, you know, we are, there's no doubt we're in a rejuvenation process. We're going to be very young, and, you know, like I said, nine of our 12 scholarship players are freshmen and sophomores, so those guys are going to get a lot of opportunity. We are really trying to keep it into pretty simple concepts and not we're just not going to be able to run 30 plays. We're not going to be able to run five defenses and, and 25 out of bounds plays. We're, we're keeping it in small packages that they can really master, and then we'll try to build on it as the year goes on. But the freshmen are really important. Um, I had a parent the other day ask me, you know, he, he goes, how, how, how deep do you think your guys are going to go? And I said, I have no idea. We're just trying to figure it out day by day. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, th there will be several of them who will be instrumental. The word rejuvenation. Right. How close do you think this program is now with this influx of youth to getting to where you want to be? Well, it, it, we, we, the last two years have been really important. We have five commitments for the class of two, 2018. And so next year's class, we will have two big classes. Um, that class is probably even bigger and more talented than the one we're dealing with right now. So it's, it's really exciting. Um, we, we are recruiting the players that we feel like fit in with the, our system and our coaches. And we just had a couple um, – I don't want to say blips, but we it just things didn't go the way we wanted with some personnel. So we are going after kids who are high character kids, who uh, want, who are able to run offense and defense, and not just have to throw the ball out and let their talent take over. So that's um, kind of where we are. We're recruiting to that, and it's really paying off.
big dividends, I think. Is it a talent accumulation kind of thing right now where you do bring in a lot of talent and that hopefully starts to kind of leave on the program? Well, talent, talent's one thing. And, uh, you know, there's a, a saying, like, sometimes really talented players are hard to coach. And, uh, and, and I'm, I'm not a, a guy who just can just let, let it just play. You just, we just don't roll the balls. We, we play a certain way. We play a, a team style. And so when, when you're really talented, sometimes you got to that point because of the things that you do. But, you know, we can't run our offense based on what 11 AAU coaches did or 11 high school coaches did. So we've got to get everybody on the same page. So we're really working on, yes, you have to have a certain level of talent, but you also have to have the, um, the mental part to, to, to grow and all that kind of stuff. When you look at the league as a whole this year, what stands out to you? I think this may be the best, the deepest the Big East has been. Um, across the board. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we could get four teams in the NCAA tournament. We've had three, I think, the last two years. And uh, it's just, uh, it, it's, a, it's a bear, it really is. I think it's, it's coming on strong. Even the bottom of the league, it, it, the, the parity is there. I think when I look at the league, it's, there's so many different styles of play. And of the 10 coaches, almost all of us play a different way. And some of us are running, some of us are slow, some of us pressed. But it's just a, it's a unique challenge every night you've got there because of the different style. So with, with all that competition and all this youth here, how, how do you judge success? Well, I, you know, I've been on some really good teams and some not so good teams over the years. And, uh, and I've always judged success. But I know it's, you know, sometimes with the media and fans it doesn't sound great. But we just want to find out to be the best team that we can be. So I, I don't know if it's a number of victories or a number of whatever, but uh, because that – isn't always there, but we're really just striving to be the best team we can be. And at the end of the year, if we can do that, we'll win enough games. Brian, I don't mean to harp on the word rejuvenation, yeah. but uh, how, what has the process been like of getting the upperclassmen to see the, the vision there? And how, I mean, obviously they're here to know what's transferred right. out, but right. how supportive are they in that? I think uh, the upperclassmen just want to win. You know, I think they're willing to do. Um, they're starting to figure some things out, and um, I, I think they see the enthusiasm from the younger, the younger group, and uh, I, I think they're all on board. Yeah. What was the um, players' reaction, or was their response to the Big East poll and being picked? I think that kind of rubs everybody the wrong way when you're in that position. I wasn't surprised considering the number of players that we were losing four starters, you know, from a team that won 12 games last year. So that didn't surprise me one bit. But I think, you know, if you're a competitor, you certainly want to show that you can do better than that. So I, I think that was probably the thought across the board.